Hi guys, this is Arif from TechShare. Today, I'm going to continue with that uh, XM Cloud series that we started before. So today I'm going to continue about um, topics like rendering variants and uh, dynamic placeholder. So why I'm talking about this too, because recently I was doing um, some sort of a conversion of work, conversion kind of work. For example, this website you can see here, so this website is basically a clone of what we have in Sitecore um, development collection website. Let me bring that on to you guys, then you will have some idea. So Sitecore has this website, um, basically uh, this website. So this is the team development for Sitecore.com. So this is a Sitecore managed website. Now what I was doing is I am going to convert this site to XM Cloud and what i have on the xm cloud version is this one so you will not find any difference here this is the xm cloud head dev tenant versal you can see here so i hosted here in versal um <clears throat> so wh while i was doing that then i was thinking how could i approach this thing so i found this dynamic placeholder is a very great things to discuss and also um the the rendering variance is also very important why i, I i'll explain that on but before that, let me bring the experience editor here and then I'll show you guys how easy, oh sorry, how flexible it is to content, to manage the content here when you are basically <clears throat> uh, managing through the experience editor. Um, so if you want to manage experience editor, then let me hit my, um, where is it? Let me go the site called cloud on second. <clears throat> so I'm I'm logging into Sitecore um, Cloud now, and then here I have this site. Let me bring that one to here quickly. So if I hit that um, experience editor here, then you will see the experience is literally same in experience editor, and um, how easy it is to you know as a content author to change anything from here and here every piece of information is editable everything that you see here in this entire home page everything is configurable so how we do that so for example if you want to change this one if you want to change the background image if you want to change everything from the hero component if you want to change this link to button the subheading and then there is another component call it three by three feature promo where you have a heading and also this little little promo thingy you can also edit including all those different icons that you have and then <clears throat> here as well there is another promo component um, when I am talking about the rendering variance then you will understand how easy it is so for example this promo component has a variant of this site code dev promo and then if you want to see for example, the standard promo variant of this, then you'd see, then <clears throat> it will basically align in a different way. Uh, if you see the other variant that we have here, then it will see uh, it is basically, you know, um, in other way around. So this kind of thing. So they are very, very interesting for me. It looks like, you know, um, literally you can, you can so now the icon going to the other side here. So this kind of thing, I mean, this is really, really amazing. And see here in this entire page, the total um, component I have used around eight to 10 and 90, not 90, I'd say 80% of those components are controlled through the promo content, uh, sorry, promo component that Sitecore ship as a part of a headless SXA out of the box. So what you need to do is for promo component, you would see, let me open the promo component here, then we would understand a little bit more here so if you go here in this um, layout rendering and then under the feature we have this headless experience accelerator and paste content you would see this promo component and the promo component if you see the promo component the data source is defined here is that so data source template is defined under features this is experience accelerator and paste content promo right and this kind of 
component is really interesting because what you really need to do literally uh, most of the time you find uh, this promo component can be fit to your um, any sort of component that or promote kind of component that you are going to develop so here under this feature headless experience accelerator base content and the promo what i am going to show you guys is the fields that it has so you can see here it has different layers of different um, sort of a field so we have the promo text we also have the promo icon promo link and then there are the secondary text and text three promo icon two um so yeah i mean you can definitely create another promo as required or you can basically get the idea from here but what i did is you know i utilized this same component but i needed to develop the variants now the people who are already were already using in sx version then normally how we create the variants so we actually go under the presentation and then we find the rendering variants item here but here we have the headless variant now rendering variants what we can do is we can basically create a variant and we can write our own markup here through the uh, scriven or um you know the sidecore way like you know field and things like that but here you cannot do anything only you can name it so what i have here in the, under the promo you can see i have created one two three four five uh total but four i have created here now using this four we can basically support everything every sort of components promo kind of component um, that I'm going to convert in, in the existing website. So, you know, that's why I did not create more than four, but four is enough for me. And here, how we are going to sort of support the markup. So markup will be supported on the headless solution, not here. What you are going to do here is only def define that, okay, I have a promo with this variant. And how we are going to work in the solution of the variant is here. So let me open the promo component here. So under my um, component, source component, uh, here you would see I have this, um, one second, what is going on here? Sorry, okay. So here you can see uh, I have this promo component here. So here in the promo component, you would see um, so the default promo component is that one and then I also have created a bunch of other promo uh, sorry variants so here this is the variant it, this is called with text variant then I have created this one with site code dev promo with something professional site code tools promo so I just name it based on the sort of thing that we have in that existing website open source tools promo and then standard promo and that's all and I, if I use those three, four, then literally uh, whatever the variation or version that uh, currently the site using, everything is really, <clears throat> you know, considered, uh, will be considered through that. So the creating a rendering variance is, you know, you have to support the markup in your headless website. That is the rendering, you know, host side. So here you have to define that on and that's it. You literally don't need to do any uh, sort of definition or anything such anywhere. So once you have this one and if you publish um, the promo, I mean, you don't need to even publish because um, you really literally um, deploy this application to your um, rendering host. So it can be a parcel, it can be inside the um, XM cloud uh, when we are going to support the editing experience. We sometimes uh, we need to you know upload the solution there as well to support the page application and things like that so that is also possible and um, yeah that is all you need to do so here you just need to follow this yeah thing the other thing i'm going to explain is that um, the the dynamic placeholder so i have created dynamic placeholder in different places most importantly i guess this is where i have created the dynamic placeholder let me <clears throat> let me see here is the place or not uh, actually not here here so if we, if I click here then you would see um, so they are all dynamic place holder here so literally you can basically remove them or you can add them as many as you can so obviously you need to think about the design or how your CSS is there to support this dynamic behavior but this is how you basically with the help of your front end you can basically control everything like if you want to delete that one then literally this two will be flexible and it will occupy the entire area 
So we can definitely write this kind of CSS, um, very flexible, uh, responsive CSS, and that will definitely support this kind of behavior. I actually did work where, you know, uh, my front end developer basically uh, guys did that. So yeah, so this is all. But when you are going to create the dynamic placeholder, so here, for example, so I have a containers kind of placeholder where um, it has a sort of a dynamic placeholder here. And then, you know, going forward, you can create. So I needed to create two components, basically. One is that uh, parent component and another one is this child component. And child component can grow based on the dynamic placeholder. And, and as many times as you create through the dynamic placeholder. <clears throat> so if I want to show you that one, so this is basically that uh, container component that I have created and in that container component, you will see there is a placeholder here and this placeholder basically um, you need to define the placeholder key, which is SC feature and very, very important because once you have this SC feature uh, definition defined in the site code. Um, then only it, it will start working, otherwise it will not work. So how you are going to define that on, that is also very tricky. What you need to do is, you need to go to um, this um, placeholder settings and I have created here. And then here I have this uh, feature where I have this SC feature and this part. So remember guys, this is very important. You have to use this kind of syntax. So you can name it anything, then dash and then um, Important thing is this curly bracket and Easter because that's how site code knows that <clears throat> That this is a dynamic placeholder and it will start that uh, sort of you know automatic numbering I guess the other thing very important when you are using dynamic placeholder is once you so you have a dynamic I have a dynamic placeholder under this 3 by 3 feature promo container. So if you go in the rendering um, In that project and rendering under my uh, under my rendering directory here. So let me go here in the project. So here, three by three promo container. This is very important, guys. You need to define your dynamic placeholder basically here. So you need to say, hey, this component uses on um, dynamic placeholder and um, the definition of dynamic placeholder is that. So that actually I, you know, uh, copied from here. So under my project directory of the placeholder settings, I have created that one I showed you before. So I just needed to drag this one here. And this is how the component itself will recognize, okay, um, this placeholder. So it basically injects that uh, renderings inside the, it injects the placeholder component inside your uh, you know, component. And that way, Sitecore will allow you or render a placeholder area for you so that user can add that dynamic component in there. Um, if you miss that part, then what will happen is you will find the error saying, sorry, uh, the placeholder is not found in the existing rendering. Uh, so it will fail. It will give you console error. And I literally took three, four, five hours to fix that. Uh, what is the problem? Things like that. And then later on, I figure out that, okay, this is the part I missed. So this part is very, very important. I guess the other thing about dynamic placeholder is since we are using SX headless, right? So when you are doing the SXA sort of development, then this presentation you know, path is very important, especially all those different items and components. <clears throat> For example, here I have this page design and partial design, and I also have this home page con component where I have grouped all those. So I have basically two version. One version user can basically, or I have created directly in the home page. All those components another version is you can basically go in your um, page design content and you can basically say hey home page <coughs> is home page design um is this home is home page design so this home template uh, if i change this one through your configured change and <coughs> there is a home template i also created um, but right now it is using paste template. That's why it is not using that one, but there is a home template as well. So if I use that one, then basically the entire design will change. So it will not take that um, rendering from the presentation details, but the SX page design and partial designs. So this is very, very, very important. So <clears throat> there are some drawbacks and things like that when you are using uh, SX here, page design, because the editing facility is not that easy. So you cannot open you cannot do editing directly on the home page. You actually need to go here and edit. 
So that is the only drawback I found. The other thing is whenever you create these partial designs, right? <coughs> Sorry. And then this is very important because partial design has a signature. Um, so when you create the partial design, then you might not find this problem at all because Sidecore will automatically create um, a signature for you here in the partial design. So for example, this dev promo, there is see this uh, partial design was automatically created. And this dev promo and Sidecore basically added this extra one as extra dash. Very, very important guys, because that is automatically be created when you create this component partial design here. And then you will see your component is resolved and working fine. But what if you are going from an old Sidecore version and you just converted or upgraded your Sidecore version, then that time, you know, you might not find those different components, but you need to create that one by, by yourself. And then just keep in mind that whenever there are partial designs, make sure you are using this signature with the SX prefix, SX dash prefix. If you don't do that, <clears throat> then your component will not be resolved, means so you will get a message saying, sorry, your component was not implemented in the front end side. This is my learning. I learned it uh, working with a lot of different clients, a lot of partners and uh, you know other people. So please keep those in mind. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's all for today. I guess um, there are some information, not that important, but uh, you know, sometimes it might help you when you are basically you know, having some issues. I guess um, going forward, I will also explain along the way, like what the certain components was developed and um, how the certain components is developed and what was the approach. And also, this is just a home page. There are a lot of other pages remaining. So along the way, whenever I, because my plan next is to integrate the order cloud with it. And then also the payment integration and things like that. So I'll catch you very soon in the next video. Bye-bye.